Hello. Hello. No, Lindsay, you don't have to talk to him like that. No, this no, no, I do. This, this isn't the night peddlers. No, this is the night peddlers. No, it's, is it? Yeah. Is Are it, you sure? I thought we were doing peddlers? another mud peddlers. No. No? We're, we're doing another night peddlers? I think it was going to be a... Night? Listen, all you need to know is that if you're a night peddler, we usually end up... <laughs> seducing you at the first part yeah of the we do yeah we do but like i just thought we were doing two mud peddlers today <gasps> oh okay okay i'm in the I process it. of so quitting my teaching. other job so right? it's teaching tales oh right we haven't even talked about all of that for you that's what i'm trying to tell oh, you that's what i'm trying to say i get it i'm sorry it's i didn't okay. know, i didn't understand all right hi <laughs> <laughs> This is The Mud Peddlers, a podcast where two nerdy ceramic artists share the behind the scenes of their worlds of clay. We are your hosts, Lindsay M. Dillon. And I am Dante of Earth Nation. All right, all right. So this week on The Mud Peddlers, we're doing a teaching tales update. Yeah, this one is going to be more uh, open, I will say. Should we just tell them right now? Yeah. I quit my other job. Hey! hey! So I did a, a YouTube episode on this, actually, okay. where I said I quit my job, and I explained mm -hmm. it in depth. Mm -hmm. And uh, the long and short of it is that, and I'm, I'll talk about finances just mm -hmm. right now, right? Yeah. Also, because if you're a night peddler, you already have heard at least a little bit of Why this conversation. What are you trying to seduce them for? Why? Shh, don't let me finish. But we're going into it more. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Why? Carry right. on, carry on. Yes. <laughs> So, long story short, my regular nine to five. So the way it really started is mm -hmm. that I worked five, honestly, six, five to six days a week, and then I had one day off for like my daughter, YouTube editing, doing the store, making pottery, X Y Z, X Y Z, X. You know, like all the other things that I do. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, it's too much. So I start working five days a week, and then they raise the premiums on our health insurance that we get through our job. Mm -hmm. By a lot. It was almost like double. Almost mm. double. Right? And so they were taking like over a hundred bucks per paycheck. Yeah. One of my buddies says, hey, you should probably just get on Cover California. They take a percentage. I think it's either Cover California or Medicare. Medicaid. One of the two. It's it's the government health insurance. Yeah, yeah. Medi and Medi you pay like a Medicare. percentage of what you make. And so it's like $20 a month for me. Mm -hmm. And I have a family and I have a child. So yeah. they give me a little bit of a break. And he was like, you could probably not work one extra day every single week. And still be making more money mm -hmm. because you're not paying the health insurance. And I was like, damn, you're right. Mm -hmm. So I took that day off. And then I used that day to have extra income by teaching at IMCO, mm -hmm. the industrial mineral company. And then I was making extra money. And then somebody poached me from IMCO months later. <laughs> and was like, come teach over here at this other place, which I won't say, but if you... Listen to the Night Peddlers. You probably already know what it is. Actually, I'm pretty sure if they listen to the earlier episodes of the Mud Peddlers, oh, you're they, I don't know. Then. I'm pretty sure they've already. I'm okay, pretty sure we've then. already talked about it. Yeah. Right. And somebody poached me, and they're like, "Come work over here," and it is a facility. Right. Mm. It seems to be a place in which people who are more well off than the average person, and I think when you say this to them. When you, I said this. It's it's a high end retirement. It's high, yeah. It's it's I, beautiful. I wish is. everybody could live in I this place. I took Lindsay there, and she was it like, was "Damn." Beautiful. The crazy thing is, I said this in class. I was like, "Yeah, you guys seem to be more off," and they're like, "We're not rich," and I was like, "Right, but you're not poor is the issue. Mm. Like none of you are low class here. You know what I mean?" And they're like, "Oh, okay." Anyway, to go back to the original thing, and so we, I started doing the math, and they told me how much they pay. They're gonna pay me, and I thought to myself, like. This could just replace my nine to five job. Mm -hmm. And for some context, in case you are a new listener and you don't know what Dante's quote unquote nine to five job was, it was. I was a, a chef slash cook at a relatively popular place in Sacramento. Yeah. And they, my, I liked my environment. The boss was nice. We had problems like any other place does. But like, you know, I was like the second in charge of the kitchen. It was great. I ordered most of the food and... You know, after a while, it just turned out to be so much work that it wasn't worth the amount of money they were giving me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted more time with my daughter and I wanted more time to spend. Like, I wanted it to be more family oriented. Yeah. And I also wanted more time to work on my expression of myself artistically and to sell my work and make more content. Because it's getting to a point where it's becoming like a career job at this point. Yeah. Uh, and so this place hired me and they, to be frank with you, the amount of money I got for my paychecks every two weeks at my nine to five cooking job were like in between... I want to say seven and 900 every two weeks. Mm. Right. But this place is like, no, no, we pay you at a, we bought them out at a certain percentage or a certain amount. And then we add on for every student that you get because the students pay for being in class every month. So the way they pay me is that essentially they pay me like 80 bucks every class. I have two classes a day, 
two days a week. Mm-hmm. So technically speaking, every week I have four classes and okay. every day is two classes, mm-hmm. right? So I only really teach four classes a week mm-hmm. and I'm only there for two days out of the week. Yes. They pay me 80 bucks for every class, no matter how many students are there. After the fourth student, they pay me $10 more per student per class. Mm-hmm. So one of my classes has 15 students in it. So for that three hours of work, because a class is only three hours, it's like $190. Hell yeah. Right? And then I have another class after that, which usually has around the same number of students. Mm -hmm. And I do this four times a week. All of this together makes over a G usually. Mm -hmm. And the previous teacher who I met with, had lunch with, great guy named Jim. He was like, yeah, in the high times, it's like three Gs. Like every month at least. In the high times and the low times, it's like two plus. Yeah. Jeez. And I was like, that automatically makes more than my nine to five job Mm -hmm. with two extra days off for family and content creation time. Yeah. I love that you consider a day off as still content creation. It is. I truly don't have days off. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm cleaning the house. Every parent that I ever talked to before having my kid is like, you don't really get days off. You just have more relaxing work than other work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's kind of true. But mm-hmm. those people usually have side jobs and then their parents. And I have a, a bit more going on. I'm not trying to... Yeah, like, no, no, no. I mean, you're, you you have a full-time plus job. Yeah, right? I, I have like three jobs, essentially. Yeah. People so, are like, video editing is not a job. And I'm like, well, then you get to be my video editor now. They're like, no, no, no. And then you try and teach them. And they're like, this is a lot of things to know. And I'm like, yeah, it's almost like you're lying to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> But like, you know, I make my own glazes. I'm part of the glazy community. It's not really a job. And then I'm my own social media manager. I don't consider that a job, but it is. There is a job form for that. And then I have to create the stuff. I have to know the stuff in the first place. I have to make it food safe. And then I have to make sure that my glazes are food safe, develop new glazes. And then I have to like kill my own stuff. Usually people have kill masters in the school. That their entire job is to kill student stuff. I do my own stuff on top of my student stuff now. And then I also have a child. And then I had a nine to five job. And then I had YouTube content creation on top of that. Like mm-hmm. I had a bunch of stuff going on. There's yeah. probably one more thing I'm just forgetting. Photography, shipping, workout, filing taxes. Yeah, the, 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 just in general being. God a, forbid I have times for my friends and to go to the gym and slap some cakes. Like God forbid, right? Uh, I just I just didn't have the time for it. I took on too much, and so I finally told my boss, like, look, this new place pays me way more for what I like doing, and I'm mm-hmm. pretty good at, and I've been doing it for a long time on YouTube and in real life to like do the thing I naturally do. Yeah. Less work, more money. I'm I'm out. I'm mm-hmm. leaving. And he, he didn't like it too much. Yeah, of course but not. But he understood. Me and him are pretty good friends. So mm-hmm. he was he was kind of like, I get it. People come and people go. Yeah. You know, we hugged I, it out. and Oh, that's good. I told him, you can have me work one day a week on the hardest day. Replacing somebody yeah. on a Sunday morning is very difficult at my job. Yeah. It takes but that's, years of That's training. for a limited time though, right? Yeah, I told him, you need to be looking for a new guy. You can't, you can't be doing this for like, I'm not going to stay on a Sunday morning for like three months okay yeah, just because yeah, yeah. it's hard to replace me like after a while i'm gonna have to pull yeah. the cord yeah 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 right so, so you're essentially giving like an extended an extended uh notice i said sort of. after saint, i said i'll give you a month notice after saint patrick's day i'm gone i'm not coming in friday saturdays anymore i looked mm-hmm. at the schedule last week and it still has me on after saint patrick's day and i told all the managers it's like i'm just letting you know i'm not showing up for those days yeah and you no longer have a punishment mechanic for me yeah and one of the people know me pretty well so he knows how i use the term punishment mm-hmm, mechanic and mm-hmm. he's like yeah, it's not like we can fire you now, huh? And I was like, mm. no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, yeah, that's that that's fair. I was like, I'm just la- – they scheduled me anyway. I just – I want to be real honest with you, and I'm letting you know because I think I'm being nice about it. I'm not showing up, so you have the opportunity to replace me. Yeah. Which I know is difficult in the first place, but it's not happening. Yeah. Like, I'm going to create YouTube videos and work at a different job. Yeah. And he's like, all right, that's fair. But this this place is great. Has yeah. a gym. You saw it. I did. Yeah, it has a gym. Has like two oh, pot holes, so, two saunas. It's so pretty. Uh, it's very, it looks like heaven. It does. To me, at least. Mm-hmm. It looks like we're pearly gates. You know, it's at least like three miles deep. Yeah. There's two hubs. What I really enjoyed about it is like, because of the just life situation of myself, what I've seen family and friends go through, and what I also know that most of people who don't have a lot of money go through in their life. Yeah. There was a part of me, like I, in general, and I admit that I, I have this, but I have like kind of a chip on my shoulder about folks who have like a lot of money. Yeah. Mostly because I'm jealous and also because I feel like our society should be structured in a way to make it so that the wage and the, like the wealth gap should yeah. not be as big as it is. Cause it's also gotten a lot worse over the last, you know, several decades. Yeah. But But so there was this part of me that was like, 
I walked into Sun City kind of like, everybody here has so much money and I'm angry and it's never, you know, but yeah. then, but I mean, but also, I mean, I was really curious to see, you know, the whole facilities. And then of course I get there. Like everyone's so nice. They're very nice. Super, super nice. They're everyone whole generation in your, nice. Everyone in your, everyone in your classes are, you know, everyone was so welcoming. They're still clay people. Uh, yeah. They still have yeah. that vibe about them. Yeah, no, and so it was, I guess why, I'm, why I bring this up is because it's a good reminder for myself that like, when it's a good reminder not to be in an echo chamber like yes 100%. Ju just because everybody there you know is really nice like it doesn't mean that wealth inequality is not a really big problem in this country yeah. like it doesn't negate all those things but it's a it's a good reminder to see the humanity in people 100 and so i'm glad i'm really glad for that because it was a good chance for me to check my own like yeah there's too much know. there's too much polarization especially every four years in america and it's just like if you just sat down and talked to someone like a normal person without being super polarized politically, if you actively don't make, and I'm not saying this is you, oh sure, but sure. I'm saying like if you actively don't make half of your personality about your political beliefs constantly interjecting them into every conversation, you would probably get along with most most people unless something's truly wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. Unless well, I mean, something's like actually f***ed in their head. But most of the time, most of the people that are my students are not my political alignment, and I, they're good people. You know, yeah. I Granted, mean, there's a scale, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I think there's exceptions. I think the thing that makes it difficult, and again, here I'm not talking about your yeah. students. I'm talking like broadly because I yes. think, and again, we're getting a little bit off here, but I do yeah. want to say that, like, for instance, I'm able to be in that space relatively comfortably. First of all, because I'm white, and most of your you know folks in there are white. There's like a class thing that yeah. is easy for me to connect with. The high majority but, of them are, yeah, yeah. But I also did not wear my like my plants against gender norm shirt. Yeah. Like I covered it up. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, I do think it is like, there can be that idea that you've kind of said where it's like, Oh, someone is just wearing their political identity on their sleeve all the time. And they need to like cool off. Not that that's exactly yeah, not, what you're yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. but there is a point where it's like, yeah, if, uh, if I told somebody that I'm gender fluid and they think that I need to die, it's right, that's an extreme. It's going to be hard for me to get along with that person. Yeah, I think absolutely. like when it comes to those kind of like life or death circumstances, yeah. bridging that gap can be really hard. Yes. So I don't want to I don't want to minimize that. Yeah, I don't I don't want to minimize it, but I do want to exemplify the fact that those are usually extremes. But long story short, I essentially like quit my job and now I have technically two, technically technically three more days off a week to make content and work on my art form. And be doing glaze experiments and pottery mm -hmm. and things of that nature. I'm on the precipice of making a new glaze. Oh I'm my God. on the edge um, of glory. The, but as far as the teaching dynamic, I think I've I've learned a lot more, and I'm tell me in my age. I think I'm chilling out a little bit more, not because not because my mentality has changed, but because my methodologies have changed mm. on how I approach a situation. Oh, tell me. Um, like yesterday, I did a a beginner class, and I was like, okay, welcome to the class. Here are my rules. The first slide, you know, I do the slideshow. Yeah, yeah. My first slide is pull, pull out the projector, pull the slideshow. My first one is like, my name's Dante. I was trained by this person. I've been doing pottery for this long. I've been doing this for this long. I developed glazes, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And then I have a little list of rules for the second page. And the first and second rules are like, no religion, no politics. I do not care what political alignment you are. I do not care what religion you are. I'm not saying you can't talk about them ever, but there's the same rules as the dinner table. I don't want no arguments about this and it's mm. not constructive to the art world, mm. usually. So, Unlo yeah, usually. Yeah, like, unless you're talking, yeah. unless you are making political work, yeah, which I, is... Yeah. I say usually just for the people that are going to bring up the small, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But as general dinner table rules, no. And I was like, if you bring it with you, you take it with you. I don't want to hear anybody stole my radio because I left it here overnight, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, you know? And one of them was like, we're not kids. And I was like, I get that you're not kids. I totally understand that. But if I'm being realistic with you, I don't want to treat you like you're old. And everyone in the class was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah, everyone was, like, on board with that. They were like, oh, yeah, we yeah. want to be treated like normal human beings without without age being involved. Yes, And I was yes. like, so I'm going to treat all of you like I treat, uh, I'm like how I used to teach college classes a long time ago when I was, like, a TA. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you the set of rules if you need help with something physically. Because realistically, you guys are no different than a normal person who's learning something. You just have some physical and maybe some mental uh, inabilities to do some stuff. Yeah. That's about it. But you are not a monolith. All of you are not the same person because you're older. Right. You guys all have different personalities. And like everyone in that class seemed to like me saying that. Mm. Everyone in that class was like, we like that you're not treating us like old farts. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so I was like, I'm going to talk to you the same exact way that I would talk to anyone with a modicum of respect regardless of your age. Mm -hmm. That means that I'm not going to be 
sensitive to your age unless you actively ask me to do something specifically because of your age. If you need help, if you want me to get water for you, for your water bucket, for your crafting, I will, I forgot what the word is. Accommodate? But, uh, yes, I will make accommodations for you. I do not mind doing that. I'm not cold hearted. I'm not just going to be like, suck it up, do some push ups. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no, right? no, no, no. But like, at the same time, I'm not going to give you special treatment because of your age. And all, like, across like 95% of them were like, yes, thank mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And one of them was like, but we are different. And I was like, you guys are generationally different, but I'm kind of, I'm not old, but I'm kind of an old head. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to see me pull up my phone two or three times in class and it's mostly to check on my wife and daughter. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah. Like they, like I vibe with them on a certain level. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I think it's because I have dad brain. I think that's really cool that you actually open that up to have that conversation too. Because I think that's like, 100%. that's one of those dynamics that like, if I'm going to be honest, that's not something I would have thought to bring up because I, I have to. I, yeah, no. And I think that makes sense for you. Like, yeah. because like, uh, how I've it? told you like, many my, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because my inclination in general too is to like, I, I tend to not in a, not in what is, I'm still trying to figure out if code switching is okay to use, like, not in a racial situation, because obviously I'm, I'm white and I'd be going into a room with a mostly white people. Right. But, like, I will change my behavior based on the people that I'm around. So it's like, I would be more inclined to try and match where they are right. on things and try it. Like, like, how I would behave around them is probably a bit different than how I would behave around, like, college students. Potentially not that yeah. different, but, but anyway, but point being, I think it's there's cool that you... There's a cultural dynamic, but there's not. Right. There's not a respect dynamic for me. Yes, 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 yes. For me, I want to make it, and I know I've told you this before, and I know mm -hmm. this sometimes rings like, you told me before it rings like conservative bells, and I'm oh. like, I don't want it to, because I never mean it in, in this, I never mean it in a politi politicized or a political lens way, but I am not going to treat you based on, and I actively do not care about like, your race, your gender, your age, how you're born. I don't care. I'm going to treat you with respect until you show that your actions are no longer worthy of that respect. Mm -hmm. Like, I only I, care about what you do. And I just ding, ding, ding that bell because yes. implicit bias and unconscious bias are still a thing. Yes, of course. But I actively try to, and I think this is a good example of it, where I'm like, I really don't care how old you are. I kind of just care how you act. Mm -hmm. To be real with you. And I'm going to treat you, like, if you're mean, I'm going to treat you mean. And if you're nice, I'm going to treat you nice. But your age and, like... That's what I strive for, is to treat everyone equally, regardless of how they're born. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, you guys are clearly older. I want to respect that, but I don't want to make it the whole, like, interaction and identity I have with you. Yeah, yeah, Our yeah. relationship should not be based on your age or your race or your gender. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't care about those things. To such an extent, they become your whole personality. Right, right, right. Right? And so they seem to enjoy that because I think they've been treated... Trot? Treat us. <laughs> they've been, they've, been, they've been treated as if uh, they, they like old. are old. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm like, not really. Yeah. Not, I mean, yes, but also like, I don't want to. Any, anyway, anyway, it, overall, they seem to have the same basic dynamic as like every other school setting I've ever been into. Mm -hmm. The veterans who are already friends who have been there for like over two years are sitting in their own table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like the newbies sit at their own table. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. like there is definitely, uh, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, there's definitely one annoying person in class <laughs> that everyone's like, yeah, that's XYZ, F and irritating. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one person who's always like, um, excuse me, you're wrong because, and I'm like, okay. Like <laughs> there was an instance where somebody, and this is true, I don't want to fight this. Somebody called me, I told you, somebody called me like a pottery snob. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the next week they did the same thing I did. And I was like, hold on, you called me a pottery snob last week, but you're doing the same exact thing I just did. Ha! And she's like, it's different. I was like, no, it's not. You're being a hypocrite. No. And the rest of the class was like behind me. Oh, my god. They were like, yeah, she does that. <gasps> oh, my God. You know, and it's, it's weird because like, I think a lot of them, because of their age, think like we're clearly more experienced and whatnot than you but this in this dynamic i'm the teacher and i'm usually more experienced in the clay world than they are yeah yeah yeah. so when i say something that they haven't experienced some of them push back mm. and so this is where i'm i was trying to tell you earlier the last podcast yeah. i was like i'm just gonna stop pushing back i'm just gonna go we'll see like, yeah you'll see either i'm right or i'm wrong and you'll see a good example of this is we did have the conversation of like why there seems to be a certain class and type of person in the ceramic art world more often than not. Mm. Remember we had that conversation quite some yeah, time ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. And people often don't like when I make this comment, but I opened it up in a more constructive way. And somebody was like, oh yeah, we're different from these people. And I was like, well, Sacramento has a different vibe. We have these, we have these conversations and they're very, they're good. I think they're constructive more so than 
judgmental at this point. That's good. Because I will say, yeah, Sacramento's a bit different. You know, Lincoln, once you get to Lincoln, you can really tell the culture difference. And she's like, what do you mean? And we had this conversation. And I was like, well, if I'm being honest with you, people who can express themselves in the ceramic art world are usually of a certain class and type because they have the availability of time, money, and space. And they've usually been at the top of the social, economic, political stratosphere for quite some time, historically speaking. Mm. So they have like the money, time, and space to just like dick around with clay and express themselves in that way. People living paycheck to paycheck or have been disenfranchised economically don't really have that as much. Yeah. And one of them goes, give me an example. And I said, you should go to a ceramic art convention and just look around. You'll usually see people who look similar to the dynamic of this classroom. Yeah. Right? And one of them goes, so where are you from? And then we had to have the conversation of I'm not Italian. <laughs> oh, boy. That led into that conversation. Oh, my God. Because I think everyone thought because I have curly hair and my skin is not glowing, glowing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like... They were like, oh, you're clearly Italian, right? Your name's Dante. And I was like, I am not Italian. I am German and black. Yeah. And then they were all like, what? But you have the skin. And I was, <laughs> I was like, I know. Genetics are crazy. <laughs> you know? And then it dawned on me like, oh, if I was, I probably wouldn't be here if that were the case. You know what I mean? Like, oh, there's, like, a, high, there's a lower chance than not that I would have. You, like if you were, if you yeah. were more visibly black. Like yes. if your skin was darker. Right. Like yeah. the clay, I don't think the clay rolled would have accepted me as much but that that's a stretch but like i still think there's a possible yeah. you know well, what i mean yeah i mean it's you would you would have okay it seems like you would have dealt with more a little more pushback more, more pushback more racism in general because it's like again colorism is a thing like a hundred percent yeah the implicit bias that you speak of people have regardless of whether they think they have it or not usually yeah, and yeah. even we have it to some extent oh yeah, yeah yeah but that being said like like, the guy with an American flag photo would not leave nice comments on, on my YouTube channel 100% of the time. Mm. It's just, it's just, anyway, I'm, yeah. I'm reaching, I'm reaching. But um, I'm trying to be more constructive. Than, but it's cool because when I first got there, I have a very specific way of teaching where I pull out a PowerPoint presentation and I, I kind of uh, profess to them, for lack of a better term. <laughs> and I tell them, like, this is what this is, this is what this is, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And I... Cool question, actually. Where did you get that projector? Because I thought that was really... I bought it on Shmamizan. What? Oh, Shmamizan. Yeah, it was the, like the... a hundo. And then I have oh, to buy the thing bad. separate. It's not that bad. It works really well and you yeah. can pop in a USB. That's cool. Like that's cool. I yeah, did. so it's basically, it's like a portable projector and projector screen. Yes. And I really, I thought that it was really good that you had that. Also because sometimes relying on a particular schools or institutions technology could be I just you don't know, trust it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So they it's break good. All the time. Yeah. So that's um, a inge- as like a as like a teaching sort of technique. That's a that's a good that you yeah. had that. I took it out. I was I thought you were gonna be impressed because you've never seen it before and I and I took it out and I thought you were gonna be like, what the hell is that? But the projector, the projector's nice. I like the projector. So mm. I create classes in PowerPoint. <laughs> so, I'm sorry I didn't meet your expectations. You weren't as impressed as I thought you did. I'm so sorry. Well, because it's like, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 portable projector. Like, it, it like yeah. I've seen things like that before, but I just, right. I honestly also, at first, I assumed that it was the school's. No. So. It's mine. I carry yeah. it around. Yeah, that's good. It's good. Um, But what I usually do is I have a projector. I put it up, and then the last class, we had a talk about the anatomy of pots and how it relates to the historical significance of certain pots fitting certain styles and profiles. Mm. And that's a long sentence, but essentially the class was, what is this? And they went, that's the Grecian Amphora vase. Mm -hmm. One of the history buffs. Because they used to be like, you know what I mean? Like history teachers and engineers and stuff like that before they retired here. And I go, great, how do you know that? And she goes, it just looks like that. And then I went to the second Mm. slide and I was like, here's where we talk about the anatomy of a pot and a profile. Here's the top, here's the lip, here's the shoulder, here's the body. And certain profiles and certain uh, spaces anatomically on a pot look different based on the culture in which you use them usually. Mm -hmm. For example, the Greeks love to hold stuff in their pots, more famously serve wine in their pots, and they hold wine in their pots. So they have a lot of like handled pots and then we went to like korea and i was like korean don't really have those that much they don't mm-hmm. have a lot of handles they might have wine vases and so we we talked about that oh cool and afterwards i got some really good feedback she was like i've never even thought of that mm. the reason why my brain relates that shape to greece without even thinking about the reasons why it relates to greece yeah oh and i love that i'm learning slowly that they got taught away this might be a generational thing i'm not sure they got taught away and then they never explored a secondary way how to do things. Mm. Like, here's a good example. They call stroke and coat, the Mako glaze, mm-hmm. different stuff instead of glaze. I call stroke and coat glaze, glaze. Some of them call it low fire glaze because it can be fired at low fire. Oh. Some of them call it high fire glaze because it can go up like 
cone six or seven. Huh. Some of them call it mid-fire glaze because it goes to five and six. Oh. Stricken coat is very, it's it's just like glass mineral color. Yeah. It's almost like Mason Stangler underglaze with a little bit of glass in it. Interesting. And because of that, you can erase that extra step, right? But a lot of them also think it's underglaze. And I'm like, that's not, technically it's not underglaze. Right. Because it has glass in it. Right. Underglaze usually doesn't have a lot of glass in it to the point where it sticks to anything. Yeah. So I bought in, I brought in last week a bottle of underglaze. Mm-hmm. And they were like, what is that? Oh. What is that? They didn't know about underglaze? Two or three of them knew. The rest of them who have been taught to use stroke and coat have never known another world outside of it. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. two or three of them were like, yeah, I use underglaze and then I put an overglaze on it. You know, so I had to then explain the cone system. And like, mm-hmm. I was like, this is zero six. And we have the chart of the stroke and coat. This is not a commercial for them. We had a, <laughs> we had a, a chart for stroke and coat. We had like a, here it is fired at zero six. And they have a secondary chart. Here it is fired at cone six. Mm-hmm. And I had to explain to them, these are the same glazes fired at different temperatures of stroke yeah. and coat. Mm-hmm. Right. And some of them were like, I didn't know that. And I was like, how long has this been here? And they're like five, six years. Oh man. And I'm like, no one told you that? And they go, no. And I said, it says it right here. And they're like, we just did we didn't read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or another problem is that they find the little pottery tricks that work in the ceramic art world. Like technically speaking, you could put low fire glazes into a high fire sometimes, mm-hmm. five, six. Mm-hmm. Um, which is technically mid fire, but whatever. And and it works sometimes, but it doesn't always work because it's not developed to work at those cones. Right. So some of them are like, it worked last time. And I'm like, what does the bottle say? And they're like, it doesn't matter. It worked. Mm. And I'm like, the instructions are kind of important, guys. Yeah. This says low fire glaze on it and you put it in the high fire, which means you probably over fire. One of them fired. Which, I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't, because you had that whole talk about how. Yes. You, like low fire glazes are not, like the whole cones aren't real thing. Yes, you yes, know? yes. So it's like. So- I went through the cones not are not real phase, phase because Mako makes glazes that survive from like, z- like four to ten. Uh, and like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And it's like the same. Anyway, whatever. It's the same glaze, too, which freaks me out. I still haven't gotten a straight answer on that. Like, why does your glaze have such a... Anyway, they don't know these little bits of information. They know the tricks. Only the tricks. You know what I mean? Like, none of them use Giffen grips. Oh. But, like, a few of them know how to tap center, but they don't know how to center center. Oh, like center center when they're, like, throwing on the wheel? Or, like, or centering as in, like, when you're trimming? When you're trimming. Which is crazy to me. Right? How do you... Right? I mean, it's confusing because it's so they don't know a lot of some of them, some of them rather, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them they don't know like the base knowledge of something. They okay. just know the after effects. Oh, it was okay, clear the okay. Teacher, I got you. I got you. It was clear the teacher taught them like the speedy way to do stuff. Yeah. But then like they never learned. Like they I were... explained what glaze is made out of one day and yeah. they were like, so it's just minerals floating in water. And mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. Did no one ever tell you that? And they're like, why is it so goopy? I'm like, it's usually a gum solution. They're like, what is that? And I'm like, it's another thing. Yeah. It's another powder that goes in a glaze that makes yeah. it. Yeah, That's actually, that makes a lot of sense. Because I feel like in general, that's how most, mm, okay, this is a broad generalization. But I feel like that's, at least that's my experience with how I was taught ceramics. Is yeah. that they teach you, they teach you how to do things, but not why those things happen. Or like the underlying rules behind them. And it, it kind of, it low-key reminds me of how I learned math. <laughs> in school because when it got to a certain point like i i mean i was okay in math like i always got like a's and b's until i got to pre-calc and then i was like "Ooh, b minus b minus real close to a c not good but point being it's like i didn't i could this is maybe not the best metaphor but it's like i could kind of i feel it solve problems but i didn't understand the baseline rules of like why we solve problems this way right no one ever told you the the base right yeah or they did and then i but i just didn't understand it so it's like i feel like with ceramics like we often get taught like okay here's how to here's how to throw here's how to glaze here it's like how to do all the things but that's why so many of us go so long before we learn like how to make a glaze right or how to load a kiln it's like the it's that technical side of ceramics that often doesn't get as you don't go into it as much because i go into it and they're yeah. like and it like here's a, here's another one right and you i don't know if you experienced this you had one but you didn't experience the base one i went i did a presentation of how clay dries mm-hmm. and the variables i just did a youtube video on this as well of the variables that mainly dictate how fast your clay dries yes 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 right and i don't know if you were there for yeah that. i was there for that okay before that presentation, I made it because they were wrapping their work up with like Target bags oh, no. and Walmart bags. And they were like, why is my clay drying so fast? And I was like, there's air holes in your clay, clearly. Yeah. And they were like, why are there air holes? I covered it with a bag and I was like, it's not very good plastic. Mm-hmm. It's it's number one, it's porous. It's made more for strength than anything else. And number two, you're just setting it like 
It's like it's kind of like lightly draped over as opposed to like actually yeah, like it's tucked not, under. It's yeah. not made of quality plastic that would form over the pot to make sure mm. that it's an enclosed kind of little dome of, of moisture. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a stiff plastic. It's a stiff yeah, it's a stiff plastic. And so they were like, but the past teacher just said to cover it with plastic. And I was like, but he never told you the reason why we cover it with plastic, mm -hmm. nor did he tell you how things dry out properly, did they? And they're like, no. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so I got to do a class. Yeah. And then sometimes I get pushback where they're just like, well, last week I let my stuff air dry and it was good for like three days. And I was like, right, well, we had a thunderstorm last week, which means there's more moisture in the air, mm -hmm. which means that if there's more moisture in the air, stuff's going to dry slower because it doesn't evaporate out of the pores of your clay as much. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, I don't like that. That's too much. No, that's too many words. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look, the drier the air is, the faster the water comes out of your clay. And usually things when hot are also dry, usually, mm -hmm. unless you're in a very specific place. Unless, yeah, unless you're dealing with, like, humidity. I was in Japan for a while, and in their summers it rains, so all their pottery stays during the summer. But we live in California, so it doesn't happen like that. Because it's dry as balls Dry here. as hell. And I said, if you threw a pot in 110 degrees, you will notice that if you put it outside, it'll dry in, like, the course of two or three hours. In the winter, especially when it's raining, it takes days. Mm-hmm. Right? And they're like, oh, okay. So from this point on, everyone just started throwing away like Target and Walmart bags. Because they were like, oh, this is why it's not working. And it really helps that they seem to be, some of them are like, I guess what you would say, old old school smart. Because two or three of them are like, yeah, I noticed that I recycle all, I recycle all of the clay that you guys don't use in there. I put it in water and then I recycle it because I watched Dante's YouTube video on recycling clay. And most of the ones that are super dry to the point where they're just dead, are wrapped up with this super stiff plastic mm. and not the garbage bags that Dante bought for us. Yeah. And I was like, start using the garbage bags. Mm hmm Right? And stuff like that, where, like, someone told them to use plastic to cover their stuff, but no one told them how. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I think that's that's my biggest thing that I've learned in teaching is that, like, I really have to teach the base of why things happen. Yeah. Instead of just telling them to do a thing and it'll be fine. Because the context of why we do the thing and how it's done and how it's done to your benefit are are lost in that translation. Yeah, yeah. Are you focused on, like, because I'm curious, because again, you know, everyone has their different, like, teaching style and stuff. And you seem to bring in small aspects of history. Are you, in terms of that knowledge, are you primarily focused on the formal qualities of things? Or, because it seems like you're mostly mostly talking about, like, the formal qualities like technique, the anatomy of a pot like you're talking about, and then you bring in some history talking about like, this is what makes an amphora, this is what makes a yes. moon jar, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. So how do you decide what aspect to focus on? So the only reason I teach those things is because I believe at a base, it scaffolds on each other. So that's more of like a later thing that I want to talk about. Like, for mm -hmm. example, I made, don't, don't ask for this. I'm going to tell you right now, don't ask for this. <laughs> um, I made a YouTube video on what what creates profile and form why pots look more elegant in the mm -hmm. mind than they do more stout or beefy even though they might be light in general right yeah. and how the brain relates to shapes like like why you would call a fork kiki key key and a spoon bob yes you know yes. what i mean yes, stuff yes, like yes. that but we're to be blunt we're just not there yet uh -huh. because when i got to class they're like I'm using the wrong plastic. So I'm interested in those aspects. Yeah. But that's a pipe dream. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Like if I make a cylinder versus when I put this little thing right here in the cylinder, this is, and I'm pointing to a cup right now for Lindsay. This is multifunctional, right? This helps fit into your cup holders and make it more stable. Mm -hmm. It also technically makes the thing look a little more lifted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because it's in a V, a taller V shape. Right. Yeah. And these two are a bit different in that form. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't want to explain this to them that yet. Because they're still learning how to wrap up their their mm. pots in plastic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, this month we're doing bubble glaze. And it's because I think it's exciting and it helps us develop plates. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Right? One of them really wants to do bubble glaze. And I was like, you know what? Bubble glaze is super easy. Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to like it online. I see it all the time. So we'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. It's very, very easy. And so I told them all, this month I want all of you to make three plates. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I have found in teaching is that I don't want to force anyone to do my lesson plans. Yeah. But I have to be very strict on like, I'm not making a lesson plan just for you. Right. There's right. one person who's like, I want to do dragons. And I go, cool. Yeah, not... dragons. Yeah. I said, do you not want to follow the lesson plan of the bubble glaze this month? She goes, no, I just want to do my own thing do dragons. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, have fun doing your dragons. Uh, ask me if you need any help. And then I went off my own and she just kind of sat there waiting for me to teach her how to make a dragon. And after a good 10 minutes or so, she's like, well, what do I glaze this? And I go, I don't know, whatever you want. Mm. right and she's like well i want to make a dragon i was like go ahead make a dragon mm. you know and i and i have to be very like 
I've created a lesson plan for you. If you don't want to follow it, that is your business. It's your money. You paid for the class. I'm not going to force you to do anything, but I'm not going to accommodate an entirely new project just for you. Because if everyone does that, the class will go to mayhem. Yeah. Right? You can't be the exception because everyone thinks they're the exception mm. after a certain point. That's one facet that I have learned that I don't like that much. Mm. Not that they do it, but that I can't. I just can't do that for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing, I have to respect their time and that whenever I do a presentation, I go, if you've already seen this presentation from another class, because I switch classes sometimes, mm -hmm. please ignore me. Go off, do your own thing. Yeah. You do not have to. If you want to learn from this, if you want to take notes, please do. Yeah, I just, I, I, I make this generalized rule of like, if you want to do your own thing, please do your own thing. Mm -hmm. I will not bug you, but do not expect me to make a whole lesson plan just for what you want to do. Yeah. You know, I think, I think that that makes a lot of sense. I think it's fair to mm -hmm. be honest. Cause it's, I'm willing to give you the skills to represent your own artwork and express yourself. I'm willing to give you the hammer. I'm not going to hammer the nail for you. I'm not going to tell you what to glaze your stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you how to represent yourself as far as style goes. But if you want to make a styled glazed plate, I'm going to show you how to make a plate for sure. Yeah. 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 But like the second that you're like, I want to make a blue plate, do it for me. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not going to take you step by step and how to make a blue plate the way I would make one. This is not Dante art time. This is you art time. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is for you. My job is to teach you. My job is to give you the tools to build a house that you would live in for yourself in the style that you would like it in to express yourself. It is not to build the house for you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you would all live in apartments. Yeah. yeah. And it would all look the same. Be ticky tacky. You won't like it. Yeah, there definitely is, I feel like, because I mean, obviously I've, I've taught less than you, but one thing I noticed when I was a TA for Marsha Schindler years ago, it's there definitely is a skill in helping people. Help help, yourself. Uh, yeah. Helping people yeah, help helping themselves. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, because again, you know, I mean, if especially if you're new to art and you're new to, you know, how, if you're new to all of this. Yes. You might just not know the, and I think I mentioned this again on our Night Peddlers episode, but like. The idea of having like a, a question thought tree mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, how do I help you set up for yourself the questions to ask yourself so that you can figure out your own answer? Yeah, because I don't want to give yeah. you the answer. Yeah, it right, takes right, away right. the struggle. Yeah, yeah. And struggle builds character. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. To a degree, yeah. yeah. Well, also there's a sense of like, you know, someone could be like, hey, how do I glaze this? Yeah. And it's kind of like, okay, well... You know, how do, you know, how do you want to glaze it? Like, and again, this is, this is less yeah, yeah, in the yeah. kind of situation where like someone is doing their own thing separate from the main lecture. Cause I think yeah. it does make sense to like not try and accommodate everyone, yes. you know, because again, things can go to chaos, but like in, like if there was a situation where, you know, as part of the kind of group assignment, mm -hmm. someone was like, oh, okay, like how do I glaze this? Then it's like, okay, how do you help them ask the question of like, okay, do I want to make this a uh, representational or do I want to make it like stylized and also knowing what those two words mean right. and having some context for that and go, okay, like, do you want to do crazy bright colors? Do you want to do dark muted colors and, or figuring out like, I don't know, but, but I mean, again, all those things take time. Right. And I feel like that's one of the things that I enjoy the most when I think about like what teaching could bring people is like figuring out how to answer those things for yourself. A hundred percent. Right now, we're just kind of going going over the things that are common sense to us. Yeah. Like, if I buy an Amico Celadon, mm -hmm. they have different hues of the same glaze. So they have, like, a green, and then they have a darker Celadon green, and then mm -hmm. they have, like, a darker Celadon green. But you and I both know, relatively, that it's basically a base glaze with mm -hmm. certain colorants in it. And then the next version of it that's darker green has, has a more, higher, uh, higher percentage. A higher percentage of, the, yeah, of those yeah, same yeah. colorants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So some of them are like, I bought Amico Celadon. They're three different glazes, but they really showed up with the same glaze and three different hues. Yeah. So they showed up with three greens and one's just a darker green and a darker green. And so they're like, what happens if I mix these two? And I'm like, it's just going to turn out green. Yeah. You bought the same glaze three times really, but they have no idea. Right. So right. a lot of the experience that I have just from moving in the ceramic art world mm -hmm. is lost on, not lost on them, but they just haven't acquired it yet. Yeah. So realistically, they bought two bottles of glazes that they're just like, I don't need these. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, didn't you want to mix glazes? And they're like, yeah, but I did. You just told me I basically bought the same color but darker three times. And I'm like, you did. Yeah. You really did. Or they'll be like, is this high fire? It says it on the bottle. And I'm like, read the bottle. Man. You know, I try and be nice about it. Yeah. But I'm like, just read the bottle. Read on the back. It'll it'll tell you what cone it is. And they go, this one says five six. What does that mean? And I'm like, that's usually higher fire. Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't call it high fire, but yeah. it's higher than low fire mm -hmm. they go so it's high fire and i go for our purposes it is high fire yes yeah it is not low fire so when you put it on the shelf put it on the high fire shelf they go okay they mm -hmm. still have trouble conceptualizing 
zero six versus six. Yeah. And so I'm yes. cementing that right now. Mm-hmm. So t- to your previous mm-hmm. question of like, are you interested? I'm interested in those facets. Mm-hmm. We're not. We're not there yet. <laughs> yeah. We're not yeah, going okay, to yeah. go there yet. I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. And I, I love them so much because some of them are professionals in their fields. Mm-hmm. But clearly, like one of them, I think you were there for it, where, is a mathematician. Yes. And I was talking about how when you make a glaze recipe, because one of them was like, I want to see a glaze recipe so bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were there, I think you were there for it. And it said, okay, like here's 100%. And then you go over that and you add the colorants. And he goes, excuse me, you can't have more than 100% of anything. And I was like, in the ceramic art world, in the glaze world, we do. We have 100% and that's what makes the base glaze. Mm-hmm. The rest of it is generally, I say generally because this is not true, just colorants and oxides and carbonates. They're, they're just the color of the mm-hmm. glaze. And he goes, and that goes too. And I said, it could go to like 111%. And he was like, that's more than 100%. That doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. And like, he explained to me later, he's like, I'm a mathematician. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, right, but we're not in the math world. We're in the ceramic art world. And for the ceramic art world, when you go on glazing and digital fire and whatnot, and they give you recipes, the glaze itself without the color is generally 100% of the glaze. Because it's a glaze at that point. Yeah. The color, which is what you guys are really interested in, is over 100%. And he goes, I just, di- I just disagree. I just disagree. And I was like, you don't really have to agree with it. It's just kind of true for us. Uh, yeah. How... It is whether you like it or not. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, because it's like language is dependent on the situation a lot of the times. Right. And we went through it. I was like, in order to make this part part of the 100%, you would have to lessen these percentages. But since 1% equals one gram, usually, unless you're making multiple batches, you would have to say one equals like 0.7 instead. And he goes, well, why would you do that? That's an extra step. And I was like, yeah, and it's difficult, and I don't want to do that. So most of us just put 100%, and we, like, we argued over it a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And he was like, there's no such thing as over 100%. I need you to say that. And I was like, okay, 200%. And he goes, that's just 100% twice. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but that is more than 100%, isn't it? It's twice of what 100% is. Mm-hmm. And he goes, no, it's 100% twice. And then I was like, okay, what's 160%? He was at 60 more than 100, but it's a whole new fat. And I was like, you're stressed out over this thing that doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this to you, but I promise you in the ceramic art field, our glazes are 100%. Mm-hmm. And then the colors are usually over that amount. Yeah. Or anything extra is over that amount. Because at 100%, it is a glaze. It's mm-hmm. considered a complete glaze. Yeah. You guys just like the color. Unless you wanted everything to be relatively clear and white or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever in white. So that's, I think that's the only thing that I struggle with in the class is trying to indoctrinate them into the clay world. Mm. You know, they have questions like, what does RIO mean? I'm like, it's red iron oxide. And they go, what? Hey, I remember asking that question. Yeah. And then. What is Rio? (laughs) Yeah. And they're like, what is, what is red iron oxide? And I goes, it's, it's. It's oxide wash, pretty much. You know, the you mix the red powder with the oxide, with water to make oxide wash, red oxide wash. And they're like, yeah. And I was like, okay, the red powder is red iron oxide. It's red. It's iron oxide. Mm-hmm. And they were like, uh, it like blew their mind. Mm. But they've been using it for years. Yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. Just no one's ever told them that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that's what I'm struggling with at the moment is that I'm trying to teach them the base knowledge to the things they already do. Yeah. And usually it doesn't go this way. Usually I get beginners who are like, I don't know anything, so I can teach them from the base. Yeah. But the pushback I get is usually like, nah And I'm like, well, let me explain to you why you... Oh, that's you interesting. Know? So it's kind of like that thing, to, if this is a correct parallel, you're, it's like when people talk about when, if someone has learned enough of an instrument to play, but they're not using the proper technique, Yes. then... And, and and again, with I mean, ceramics, yeah, with ceramics, obviously, you know, there's many different ways to get the same thing, but yes. in terms of like, but there, there, there are more efficient ways or like better ways to like do a certain thing. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I get what you're saying. I think, yeah. a, I think a more apt example is that like, have you ever met a guitarist who doesn't know how to read uh, music? Oh yeah. 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 It's like that. We're mm-hmm. like, they're already at the stage where they're like guitaring, but they don't under, I'm like, this is an E and this is an F. And they're like, I don't know how to read music. Gotcha. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. Why are you playing the guitar if you don't know how to read music? And they're like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, you could probably play better if you knew how to read music. Yeah. And they're like, no, me doing this three notes. The Stairway to Heaven song for the past five years has worked for me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm telling you, you could play a bunch of different music if you knew how to read the notes. Yeah. I'm telling you yeah. that. But I mean, it's fair. Maybe some someone just wants to read the It's fair. One thing. But what often happens, and this is where I started the conversation earlier where mm-hmm. I was like, I'm just going to let them do what they do and they'll yeah. learn by themselves, is that some of them take my advice and they end up doing these things that mm-hmm. they're like, I got three more inches on my cylinder from doing mm-hmm. this one thing Dante told me to do. And so Stairway to Heaven doesn't look so good when someone else is playing a a different you know what i mean like we've all been playing stairway to heaven forever Mm. and all of a sudden susan is playing a whole different song how is she doing that and she's like well dante taught me how to read this one note and now they're like oh 
we should listen to him a little mm, bit. You know? Okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense. And so that's kind of where I am, where I'm like, hey, man, I'm not going to force you to do anything. You do what you want to do. But if you see some stuff that someone else is doing that I taught them, maybe give me a holler. Mm-hmm. Maybe give me a chance. Yeah. Finger guns. Yeah. Dad, my dad finger guns. Dad finger guns. Yeah. I have these now. That's cool. Sorry, I talked a lot. I'm done now. No, it's good. That's good. No, it's good. It's a solid, solid teaching update to, uh, to what is your, your newfound, uh, well-paying job. Yeah, but I quit, I quit my other job. I'm so happy for you, dude. They're mad, they're mad, they're, they're not mad, but they're like, what are we gonna do? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, there's four people who hold that place together. Yeah. And I was one of them. Yep. And even on the days that I'm there, sometimes we struggle because we're understaffed. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, crap, we're losing Dante. What are we going to do? Yeah. And I'm like, you got to hire more people. And the bosses are trying, but it's hard. Yeah. It's yeah. not nobody wants to work anymore. It's yeah, no, like, of course not. It's just like, ha- like somebody will sign up for their job and then just not come in. Yeah. And we're like, we don't know what's going on in your life, but it's you should have shown up to yeah. get the job. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything well, else we should talk about? That was no, I don't think so. I mean, I think we're we're uh, we're at fifty minutes. Oh my that. god, I yeah. talked too much. <laughs> well, dear listeners, if you have any questions for uh, for us about teaching, about you know what it's like, how how Dante got into this position, or or or, or things like that, send us messages, and then we will uh, we will answer them. We will answer them. So uh, I don't know. Say I'm something, listening. Say something profound. <laughs> Profound. Profa- profound. The emptiest barrels make the most noise. Remember that when that man's shouting in your ear next time. Why are men shouting in your ear? Because they're empty inside. Oh. Okay. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>